Hey everybody, it's Matt Powers. I want to talk to you today about the different types of compost because a lot of people just think compost is compost. And if you've got it, it's great. So let me start with this story. So Dr. Elaine Ingham, when I was interviewing her and asking about the history of compost, how this all started, how best practices were developed, she was explaining to me how in the 90s, not too long ago, they didn't understand why sometimes compost would kill things and sometimes it would help things. And that difference, I think, is, not, is still not well understood. Why would compost that, you know, you're creating it all the same way, create one thing that's good for one plant and one thing that's bad for another? So what we have to understand is that different soil types beget different ecosystems. So if you have a certain soil type, it's going to bring in certain native plants for that bioregion. And if you change that soil, the plant types, the weed types, that the native plants that show up will change. And you can test this for yourself. You can just take an area and enrich the soil. You can bring in legumes and see what happens, see what pops up. The other video I did with reading the weeds shows that there was a native dandelion and then there was a different dandelion, a dandelion that actually came over with settlers, I do believe, that thicker stem dandelion. That was the desirable dandelion that we brought. And so this shift is all about opportunities that are opening up in the soil food web, in that area, and they all have to do with the soil. So if the soil is loose, then you're gonna get weeds that have really fine mesh you know, root systems. And if you've got really compacted soil, you're gonna get that, that spear that goes deep into the ground and anchors it and finds water and it's biological tillage. And so these soil types beget the plants. And if we understand what types of soil we want, then we will get the garden or food forest or orchard or, or woodlot that we would like. So understanding what compost is and which compost is right for us is incredibly important. So the first thing I want to say is that there is garden compost and then there's orchard compost. So garden compost, this is like your vermicompost, your worm bin. This is your moldering compost and this is even your hot compost. So you're taking the greens, the browns and the manure and making the hot compost. It's bacterial dominant for the most part. So it's perfect for the garden. And then all the simple sugars that are coming out of the kitchen waste. Those are also bacterial dominant because bacteria prefers the simple sugars. And all these things usually were disturbing, constantly moving around, even the worms are, you know, you know, tilling it up. That is not going to allow the fungi to develop its threads and be undisturbed. So that is why those are not fungal dominant. And so those are all perfect for the garden. You're like, wait, fungi is not good for the garden? It's like, no, we want fungi in the garden. We want to have no till in the garden, but it's more bacterial fungal balanced in the garden than it is fungal dominant. So if you go to the areas where there are foraging mushrooms, if you go to the areas where like mycologists just dream of traveling and living, you'll find that it's forested. You'll find that it's that old growth forest where the most fungi are, the soils are all myceliated. There is a an old growth forest, there's an intact mycelial network which is what we call the wood wide you know, web, the uh, internet of the soil. It's really the uh, interconnections and the facilitation of the soil food web economy. And so that is going to be fungal dominant compost that you want for those kind of situations with perennials and trees and woodlots. And so we're talking about you know, compost that is primarily made up of wood. So a fallen forest, you know, grows a forest. And so if you're making a compost and you're doing the, the Elaine Ingham method, you're doing the Berkeley compost, hot compost method, you want to get that up to heat really going, really going, and then combine it 50-50 with wood chips or Ramiel wood chips, you know, just little twigs and all that kind of stuff, and then let it sit for a year. 
and that is going to arrest all that heat, all that nitrogen is going to be tied up into those wood chips, and then for the next year, it's going to continue to slowly break down, and the most of the digestion is going to happen from fungi. So you've got this great setting, you've got this great housing, and then you bring in the wood, and then the fungi goes to work as that reaction really kind of shuts off. Um, so there's no more heat. Uh, it's just the fungi now working and, and participating in the soil food web there. And so when we think about these things, when we realize that fungal dominant is more for perennials and bacterial dominant is more for gardens, for annuals, we realize that this is how they were preparing things in such a way that it was sometimes it was killing things, sometimes it was helping things. And then to make things even more complicated within within these different composts, whether it's for the garden or for the orchard, we've got different stages. So you've got flowering and fruiting, and then you've got vegetative growth. And vegetative growth is going to be from nitrates, and then flowering and fruiting is going to be from ammonium. And these are actually associated with different pHs. And this is why when you go to the store and you're looking at perhaps fertilizer, you see that there is growing and then there's blooming or fruiting. And that is the difference. It's a pH difference. And with a compost, it's all the difference. So you might have that fungal dominant, that awesome orchard compost, that's awesome but you might want to take your garden compost and then feed it in the compost tea fungal foods. Amp up the fungal side of things and then spray that on your plants as they're just starting to flower. And that will feed them and hormonally trigger them to fruit and flower more. And you can do the same thing with kelp, that will help. Um, you can combine kelp, add it to the compost tea. That's also a best practice. Um, it is a uh, fungal food um, and it's a mineral food. It's awesome. The, the plants absolutely love it. So you could be doing that and then you could, you could even be doing the same thing with your food forest. You could be having compost teas that you're using and even more foliar sprays. There's a whole suite of amazing foliar sprays. Michael Phillips uh, showcases them in the Holistic Orchard. If you don't know that book and you've got fruit trees, please go out and buy that book today. It is life-changing. And if you're like, I don't have money to buy that book, go on to Living Web Farms. Yeah, Living Web Farms or Living Web Media or just type Living Web Michael Phillips into YouTube and watch the whole series he did with them because he gives a ton of the information. Um, it's not, you know, packaged and, and, and as clear as it would be on a piece of paper, but it's all in there. Not all, but mostly in there. So check that out. Get started with Michael Phillips. He'll give you a ton of information um, that, that ties into all this. So if you want to have the best compost, you need to know what kind of compost you actually want. What kind of objectives, goals, situation that you're actually dealing with. You might want to, you know, deal with a press problem or a disease or a pathogen. You might want to dissolve that. You might want to strengthen the plant so that it's resilient to this or that. There's so many different things that can be just created and generated in a compost heap, in a compost tea brewing situation. And it all comes back to understanding what exactly we're doing, what exactly we want to be doing, and how these things actually work. And that's what I teach. That's permaculture, soil, science, and solutions. And we've only got a few more hours to make this happen. So if you wanna join us, check out the new books, the new courses, all of it. We've got peer reviewers. We've got so many people that just keep showing up and being like, oh, I wanna help, I'm doing this. And it's like, wow. And so we're growing the group. It's going to be amazing. If you've liked my past courses, if you've liked my past books, if you thought that, man, Matt is really good at collaborating. Matt is combining all these different things from all across the map to create a cohesive, organized understanding that makes it easy for people everywhere to get involved. That's what I'm gonna be doing again, because I love that. <laughs>
that, you know, as a, as a teacher, as a high school teacher, you know, like this is what we're about. We're about creating that communication, creating that, that understanding and spreading a better life for people everywhere. I'm Matt Powers. Grow abundantly, learn daily, and live regeneratively. And thanks for watching. And if you haven't joined us already, click the link below and join Permaculture Soil Science and Solutions. The Kickstarter, it's almost over, and you don't want to miss it. There's amazing bonuses. You actually get free courses when you sign up. So check it out. <laughs>